Hey guys, it's Jamie from No Getting Off This Train, and today I'm going to do some weekly meal prep. So if you guys don't do any kind of meal prep, I highly recommend it. So first thing, it saves money because you're not running out to the store or to the drive through to get more things to make meals because you have stuff already prepared. Number two, it saves time. How many times have you guys gone to make dinner and realized, oh, I have to chop all these vegetables or, you know, something similar to that. If you meal prep every week, you're going to have all those vegetables already chopped and ready to go. And number three, it is a lot healthier. I know I keep myself accountable when I already have like carrot sticks chopped up. If I want a snack, I'm going to reach for those instead of going off and finding like maybe chocolate or something. If you can find at least one hour every week, whether it's on a Sunday afternoon or early in the morning to get a little bit of meal prep done, you're going to be so happy with yourself. I promise. Now I usually do my meal prep on Sunday afternoons. I set up Allison with a movie in the living room and I spend between 60 and 90 minutes preparing our breakfast for the week, chopping vegetables or anything else that needs to be done. Now, this is actually Monday. I usually do it on Sundays, like I said, but I wanted to make sure I had a huge block of time to do this to show you guys. So it is currently Monday morning, it is 10.18. Let me show you what I have to do. On the agenda for today, I'm going to make some peanut butter chocolate chip energy bites for Allison's breakfast. I'm going to chop up a butternut squash and some broccoli. I've got two heads here and I'm going to roast both of these in the oven. I'm also going to make up some quinoa because I am making some breakfast bowls with the quinoa the vegetables, and then some fried eggs when it's time to eat. And also, I'm going to wash Allison's strawberries. So, let's get started. First thing I did was preheat the oven to 400 degrees. I've got that going right now. And I am now going to start the quinoa. Now, as you can see, I'm using a food scale. I find that the food scale is my most favorite kitchen tool because I can measure things so much better. I'm gonna use about 3 fourths of a cup. So each serving is 43 grams. So I've got 86-ish right here. And then I'm gonna pour it into a colander. I guess you would call it a strainer, not a colander. But you're supposed to rinse your quinoa before you cook it, just to get rid of some of the bitter taste. So I'm going to rinse this real quick. All right, I'm just gonna dump the entire thing in here. And I usually just put like a chicken bouillon cube in here. You can use like chicken broth, vegetable broth, any kind of seasonings. Salt and pepper would be okay. I just like adding one cube in here for some flavor. And then I'm going to fill this maybe a little bit past the one. I don't know if you can see that down there. But cooking quinoa in the rice cooker saves a whole lot of time. It is very hands off. So I will let this cook while I do everything else. That should be enough water. Now plug it in. I always cook it on the white rice function. The quinoa will take maybe 30 minutes to cook. We've got that going. Okay, this is my least favorite part of meal prep, and that is preparing the butternut squash. Now, it's not difficult to do, it just takes so long, but here is my favorite shortcut that I use for butternut squash. So first of all, make sure there's no sticker on it. Then you take a fork and you poke holes. You're gonna poke holes all in it because you're going to microwave it for about a minute. Because the squash is so hard, it's really hard to cut. So I always microwave my squash for about a minute, minute and a half, and that'll make it at least softer enough that I can cut it with a large knife. So let me just microwave this real quick. Perfect. Okay, 
here we go. So I actually like to wear a glove during part of this because it tends to stain my hands and get them like really dry. I know it's weird. I just have really sensitive skin, I guess. So after this is microwaved, it's just a little bit warm, not too warm. I always chop off both ends. Rotating it seems to help sometimes. So set those aside. I keep the plate that I microwaved it on because I'm going to put all the seeds and the, and the outside of it on there. And then turn it upright. Then take your knife and just very carefully cut all the way down. It's a little more difficult than I thought. There we go. So now it is cut all the way through. And now what I do is just take a spoon and just dig out the seeds. Usually if you scoop all around the outside, you can usually get all of them in the first try. Mostly. And then I like to scoop out like the rest of the stringy stuff and get the rest of the seeds. that one's done. Then you just do the other one. Now I really like butternut squash. It is kind of similar to sweet potatoes like in the taste, but I know they're lower in carbs, lower in calories, extremely delicious, and you can use them in different ways. Um, I like to roast them. I've roasted them with like cinnamon and honey or maple syrup before. I've also roasted them with garlic powder, chili powder, so you can use them in a couple different ways. All right, now that I have taken out all the seeds, I will peel the outside. See, it's not difficult to do. It just takes so long to do it. That's why I really like doing my meal prep on Sunday afternoons because that way it is all done and I don't have to do it while I'm trying to cook dinner. Okay, there's one. As you can see, it does take a while. But it's all worth it. All right, the squash is finally peeled. I just throw all the peelings back onto that same plate and I'll worry about throwing it all away later. Alright, now we get to chop. So what I do here is just lay it down flat like this and then I'll start at one end and then just kind of slice them and then we'll cut them into cubes in a minute. Okay, so as you can see, I still have a seat on there, but you can kind of see like there's a lot of membrane or the stringy stuff. I will take my peeler and then just kind of go around it. It peels most of it off. There, see, nice and smooth. So you can do that with the other ones too. That looks good. So my advice is just try to make meal prep fun. 
It doesn't have to be like some boring thing that you have to spend an hour doing every week. I mean, listen to music. If you have a TV nearby, maybe you can watch your favorite show. Uh, you could listen to an audiobook or a podcast. You can get a whole lot done in an hour, like a whole lot of reading uh, or a whole lot of listening or watching your favorite show. I usually listen to audiobooks and I like the ones apparently that are about 30 hours long. And a quick tip, if that sounds unbelievable, like you could never do that, try upping the speed. I listen to my books at 1.2 times the speed. You could also do maybe 1.5, but I found that 1.2, it still sounds like the original speed, but it's just a tiny bit faster and you'll be able to finish your book a lot faster. Now with a 30 hour book, you're probably not going to finish it in a day. It usually takes me three or four weeks, something like that. And that also depends on how often I listen to it throughout the day. Because I will listen to it on my runs, places like that, when I'm driving somewhere, like without Allison. No matter what you decide, just try to make meal prep fun. So it's not boring. So right now, I have a cookie sheet over here that I have sprayed with cooking spray. Once I finish chopping all of these, I will spray all of this again, the tops of them, and probably sprinkle some salt and pepper over top. Maybe some garlic powder, I don't know yet. Well, that took much longer than I would have liked. Um, like I said, I love butternut squash, but it takes so long to prepare. However, it's much cheaper to buy it whole and cut it yourself than it is to buy like a bag of frozen. So let me just spray the top of this. You can use olive oil too, just to drizzle on top. I just prefer cooking spray because it's easier. And I'll sprinkle some salt and pepper. And then what I'll do is put the squash in the oven now, and I will roast it for about 30 minutes. Broccoli takes about 20, but I think 30 minutes would be good for the squash because at 20 minutes, it's just kind of soft. So I wonder if 30 will make it a little bit more crispy. So we'll try it and see. Okay, next up is the broccoli. Thankfully, this will not take as long as the squash did, as you can see. I have already washed off the broccoli. So all I will do is just chop off right there. And then I like to just pull them apart like this. And then if it, this one looks like an okay size, but you can also like break it apart a little bit and then place it on your cookie sheet. I've already sprayed this cookie sheet as well. So I've been trying to get a lot more vegetables in my diet recently, especially now that I'm running again and doing some weightlifting. I am aiming to get five or six servings of veggies a day, which a serving is about a cup. So I need a lot of veggies. And I don't necessarily like eating vegetables as a snack. Like I'll eat carrot sticks and hummus or with guacamole or something. But I just don't like eating raw vegetables for snacks. So I try to fit them in during my meals. Which means I will need about two cups of veggies per meal. So this right here will give me what I need for breakfast. And you don't have to use butternut squash and broccoli. I mean, you can find your own favorite vegetables. You can use cauliflower. I'm also putting spinach in mine too, but I'm not roasting the spinach. Really, whatever vegetables that you like, it'll work in a breakfast bowl. Okay, that was pretty simple. I'm just gonna spray these again. Add some salt and pepper on top of these. And then 
then I will roast the broccoli for 20 minutes. That gets them nice and crispy. And now that we've got those in the oven, the quinoa is just about done. It says it's got about 12 minutes left. So now I'm gonna work on the peanut butter energy bites. I'm gonna start, this looks like about a fourth cup. I'm gonna start by chopping up these chocolate chips. And the thing about chopping up the chocolate chips is that you get a whole lot more chocolate in each bite, which is awesome when you love chocolate like Allison, just like her mom. I'm just roughly chopping them up into pieces. They don't have to be really tiny or super exact. Okay, that looks fairly good. Let's grab a bowl. All right, here's our bowl. You just pour the chocolate chips in there. Awesome. And now we need some peanut butter. I like using the natural peanut butter because it's just got peanuts and salt. I don't necessarily need all that sugar for Allison. So we need, not, I, I don't know the recipe offhand. That's really bad. I'm pretty sure it's three fourths cup of peanut butter. And I don't think I have enough in this jar. So I'm gonna have to open up the other jar. Yeah, I was afraid of that. I'll be right back. Here's the problem with having just all natural peanut butter is that you have all the oil on top when you first open it. So that means when you first open a package of all natural peanut butter, you gotta stir it. And you gotta stir it for probably a few minutes, see? all that oil in there. So you gotta get it all mixed together. So give me just a second here. All right, it didn't take too long. Now it looks really runny. When you put it in the fridge for a while, it starts to harden up a little bit. That's the beauty about the natural peanut butter. It does get really oily. Um, once it's in the fridge, it does get a little bit firmer. Okay, that looks about right, I think. Let's try this again. So we'll add 3 fourths cup of peanut butter. And then I believe 1 third cup of honey. I actually have the recipe here on YouTube and I will link to that in the description. So I'll see later if I'm right. But I mean it's a really simple recipe. You can't really mess up energy bites. If you use a fourth cup instead of a third cup of honey, it'll be okay. Use a little extra peanut butter, a little extra oats. There's that. Now, all we need are oats. We need one and three fourths cup of oats. And I'm just about out of old oats. You gotta add them to the grocery list. Now, all we do is stir. And the good thing about peanut butter that has been out of the fridge is that it's a whole lot softer, which means it's a lot easier to mix. If you have peanut butter that's a little bit firmer and just won't mix very well, put the peanut butter and the honey in a bowl and put it in the microwave for like 10 seconds at a time. And that will soften up the peanut butter and make it much easier to mix. All right, it's currently 11.05. We started at 10.18. I don't know if I'll make it in time, but we'll see. All right, I had to make some room real quick, but I managed to do it. I'm gonna freeze these energy bites, actually. So I'm gonna put, take this cookie sheet, put some parchment paper on it. And we'll be all set. Okay, the quinoa just finished. And the squash has about 13 minutes left. 
I like to wear gloves with these two because I try to form them into a ball shape. So I've got a cookie scoop. I just scoop it into my hand and then kind of form it a little bit and put it right down here. Now it's a little sticky. So another trick I've learned, you can either um, put water, like sprinkle water on your hands or just take some cooking spray and just kind of spritz your hand a little bit and that tends to help keep it from sticking to your hand. Now these energy bites are freezer friendly. Like I said, I've got a link to these down below to the video and it's got the entire recipe on there. I actually think these taste better frozen because the chocolate chips are harder and I kind of like that crunch. Allison seems to like it that way too. And what I will do this week for her is give her, I don't know, maybe two or three of these. Um, I put all the ingredients into my fitness pal and each one is like, I don't know, 80, 90 calories. I'm not counting calories for her, it's just for my own purposes. So I'll give her two or three of these and then I bought some Yoplait yogurts. She loves yogurt, as do we all. So I bought a few for her to enjoy this week. So the peanut butter and the oats will give her some good like fat and protein. The yogurt will have some protein in it. Hopefully this will be a good filling breakfast for her. And a little bit better than cereal maybe. She's been eating cereal for like the past couple of weeks. Hoping she won't get tired of it. Okay, they're sticking into my hand again. Try a little bit more. Alright, I made these a little bit bigger than I usually do I think. Because this is supposed to make like 20 or 21 and I got 18. So no big deal. I will put these in the freezer here in a little bit. So let me work on the strawberries real quick before the, the squash comes out. Okay, here is how I wash my strawberries that allows them to keep for at least a few extra days in the fridge. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of just regular distilled white vinegar. I believe the ratio is one part vinegar to nine parts water or something like that. So I'll just pour some water in here now. Then I've got the strawberries. Now, strawberries are the only fruit that Allison will eat. She'll eat applesauce sometimes, but I need to buy strawberries for her every week, summer, winter, whatever, even when they're like $3 a pound. She's worth it though. So just kind of push them in there and let them sit for about 10 minutes, that should be enough to clean them. I think the broccoli is done, so let me check. Yeah, I think the broccoli looks done. Let's see if I can show you real quick. But what I'm looking for is just that, uh, the slightly brownish on top here. That is perfect for my roasted broccoli. Alright, now we just gotta wait for the squash. Alright, the butternut squash only has like three minutes left. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my breakfast bowls just to get a head start on them. Now, I know the containers don't match, but hey, that's real life, right? Oh, maybe I should show you the quinoa first before we get started here. I already fluffed it, so this is what it looks like after it's finished cooking in the rice cooker. Like I said, it only took like 30 minutes, which is not bad at all. Alright, let's go ahead and assemble them. So I will start with about a fourth cup of quinoa in each container, just to start out with. And then I can 
can always add more if I need it. A little bit of quinoa goes a long way too. Like, did you see when I uh, when I first made it? Like, it wasn't a whole lot uncooked. But once you cook it, it totally expands like this, which is pretty awesome. still have some left, so I'll just kind of put the rest in there as evenly as I can. Alright, cool. So there is the quinoa. Let me show you the squash real quick. So the squash didn't really brown the way I wanted it to. I mean, it still looks good. It's still going to be nice and tender. It'll be okay though. Let's go ahead and put all the veggies on the bowls. I'm gonna add one cup of butternut squash to each bowl. Look at all those veggies. All right, now for the broccoli. I don't think I'm gonna have enough for a full cup of broccoli in each bowl. So let me try to portion it out and then we'll see. Yeah. I have one left, so I think what I'll do, just take a little bit from each one. It doesn't have to be a full cup of broccoli. All right, that looks perfect. So what I'm gonna do is let these cool, and then I'll put the lids on them, put them in the fridge, and then when it comes time to eat in the mornings, I'll just heat one up in the microwave, and I will fry some eggs. I like mine over easy, so I'll fry up two or three eggs and then put it on top and just eat it for breakfast. This is going to be so huge and so filling. It's going to be awesome. So those are my breakfast quinoa bowls. I believe the strawberries are finished, so let's go drain them real quick. So all I do with the strawberries after they're finished is just pour them into a colander and then I will just rinse it off with cold water just to get the vinegar off it. And then I will lay them on a large towel to dry and then I'll put them in a container and stick them in the fridge. Here is the aftermath of my meal prep session. I was able to make six breakfast quinoa bowls with quinoa, butternut squash, and broccoli. I washed one pound of strawberries, it is now drying, and I made 18 peanut butter chocolate chip energy bites for breakfast. This is what's left over of the butternut squash. I will probably just heat it up later and eat it as a side item with something. I am not sure what yet. The current time is 11.29. I said it would take an hour. It took about an hour and 10, 11 minutes which is really not bad, especially with all the camera changes and things like that. So thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you so much for watching my one hour meal prep session. I hope you're now inspired to start your own one hour meal prep sessions every Sunday, whenever you have time to do it. As you can see, we're all set for breakfast and it's going to be awesome. Now, if you have any other suggestions on what you wanna see me make for my meal prep sessions, leave me a comment and let me know. I'm also going to leave a link down below to all the blog posts with all my meal prep sessions and any other meal prep tips that you need. Also, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for any more updates regarding my grocery hauls, my recipes, and meal planning tips. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you later.